Alrighty guys, welcome back to another LEGO set review from Rick Maverick, and today we have set number 76124. This is the LEGO Marvel War Machine Buster, containing 362 pieces and retailing for $35 in the United States, uh, containing four minifigures, uh, and, you know, I did not get it on clearance for $3, I bought it on eBay from a guy who apparently only paid $3 for it, so... You know, I, I kind of wish I was him, but the uh, you know the set had the new Ant-Man helmet, which I really wanted to check out, and the build doesn't look too terrible. So it was something that was kind of like on my radar of, mm, I'll try to get this before it retires. Um, and yeah, the instruction booklet is nothing crazy special. You know, it's exactly what you would expect from a Marvel instruction booklet. It does have an ad for Marvel Super Heroes 2 and a couple of the other Endgame sets because um, this was released alongside these in the April 2019 wave. And, yeah, I mean, that's that's all there is for packaging material. Uh, let's take a look at the single build of the set, which is the War Machine Buster. Here it is, the War Machine Buster, and it's pretty similar to the Hulk Buster from Infinity War, which came out the year before this. Uh, it's, you know, not, not, not that different in size. Uh, like, if you were to remove this cannon and... Maybe remove this one too. Uh, it's pretty much exactly the same size, uh, though this set was five dollars more expensive. Um, so you know there there is that going for it. Um, it. Does have you know kind of the articulation you would expect. You can move the legs up and down, and you do have a ball joint for the uh, ankle joint there. Um, you can you know sort of try to get this into some sort of running bows. Uh, let's see if we can do that. Uh, you, know, you can get it to kind of stand like that, which doesn't look too bad for running, I guess. Um, good. Uh, there's probably some other, yeah, you know, like that too. Oh. That's reasonable enough, I think, for leg articulation. Uh, kind of what I would expect. Uh, you have a sticker here and here, as well as uh, there are four of this same sticker in the set. Two used on the feet here. Uh, just turn the feet around so you can see the back, you know, and, and reasonably okay. And then there are two more identical ones uh, to those up on the arms here. Um, you know, the torso area of the War Machine Buster, actually kind of like from the back, it doesn't look awesome. Uh, back of the legs too. Not, not great, but they don't look terrible. There's a little bit much red showing through the back, I think. Um, like from the front, you kind of just have a little bit of red accents. Um, but, you know, from the back, you kind of got like like all this up here and down in the legs too. I don't know, just a little bit too much like regular red for me. The trans red, I think, is really good. And I, I like all the instances of trans red on this, but the regular red just uh, is a little bit, a little bit of, uh, not great. Um, but, you know, the torso build for this, I actually think, came together pretty well. Uh, to get access to the figure, all you do is open it up like that, and I think that, you know, these ball joint pieces uh, really kind of help bring that all together. Uh, you do have a couple stickers used up there that look reasonably okay. I like the print for the dome here. I think that that looks good, and you can open that up, too, to show the figure through the top if you would like, and, you know, that's kind of what you want to do to get access to the figure. Behind the figure, there's really no, like, special controls or anything on the inside, but you do have this uh, way to store eight extra studs on the inside, and, you know, that slides in reasonably well. Uh, if you have this without a figure inside of it, you know, just, you know, because it looks pretty much the same, uh, that will kind of rattle around, though, and, you know, fall out. Uh, well, not, like, fall out of the cockpit, but it will fall out, um, you know, of where it's supposed to be. Uh, you do have a couple more stickers up here on the shoulders um, with the Mark 4.5 designation up there. And, you know, the arms are reasonably okay. you got a ball joint up here. This will move out of the way to give you a little bit more articulation. So if you wanted to go like that um, and kind of raise the arm up, you're able to do that. Um, the kind of shoulder, or the, the elbows here, uh, just turn. So that's like a wrist back here, which is a little weird. And the hands are kind of, uh, kind of, eh. They've got the red repulsors there. you got the four fingers, which can move, but um, this fourth one isn't really all that useful. Uh, and you really can't hold a figure there because of the repulsor. So it's more if you want to be like, eh, and pretend you're shooting. Um, you do have these stud shooters here, which can uh, be equipped onto the War Machine figure, or you can just leave them out here. And, you know, they do shoot exactly as you would expect. Uh, I'm not going to shoot it off because I don't want to lose these studs. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the other arm is exactly the same, completely identical, just symmetrical. And you do have a 
uh, flick fire missile cannon up here on the top, which is on a ball joint, so it can rotate however you want, and you can just shoot those off, as you would expect, and there is, uh, alternatively, another six stud shooter cannon on the other uh, shoulder, which, you know, you can turn all the way around, and it is also on a ball joint, and I'm not going to shoot all that off, because again, I don't really want to lose all those studs, but it can be done pretty uh, easily. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much all there is going for this uh, War Machine Buster. We're going to take these two stud shooters, and we're going to pull these off and attach these to the War Machine figure. And War Machine here is got his quantum suit on. Um, you know, he, he looks fine. I mean, the helmet is a new print. Um... Well, I guess I guess technically print, sort of. Uh, it's a new design for the helmet, where it has a little bit more black at the bottom than previous suits have had. He does have the uh, newer roadie face from the Felber pack. I believe it was first introduced there, right? Um, which does have the heads-up display on the other side. And you can see that with the helmet surrounding it. And, you know, close it up like that. Uh, on the back, he does have this... Uh, one by two plate with a clip on the side that allows you to attach one of those stud shooters as his shoulder cannon, and that looks okay at best. Um, you know, it's it's fine, but nothing crazy special. And the torso print for the quantum suit there, you know, it's got some good good detail on it. Um, I like the kind of really subtle black dots in this uh, bottom section there. Uh, it's also present on the front, uh, and he does get his other stud shooter just in his hand as an accessory. But you know, the quantum suit prints are pretty cool, but it is kind of you know, not the best version of, you know, a War Machine suit. I would have preferred just a new War Machine armor print um, over a Quantum suit, but I get that, you know, they really didn't want to spoil anything for Endgame, so they just gave everyone Quantum suits. For me, at least, the star of the set is this Ant-Man figure, and, uh, you know, it's got the same Quantum suit, so it's definitely not for that. It's for the new helmet piece, which is uh, the one that they actually molded, uh, especially for Firefly in the DC range, um, which I believe came out around the same time as the Ant-Man and the Wasp set, so I don't know why they didn't use that, um, or this piece for Ant-Man then, uh, but regardless, I think this is a much better version of the character's helmet than the concept art-based one that they used for Ant-Man, and for some reason decided to keep reusing for Ant-Man and the Wasp, even though they changed it so that the suit covered his mouth completely. Uh, but, yeah, this is a really well-done helmet. I mean, it's, you know, it's obviously less Ant-Man specialized, because they did use it for Firefly first, but I think that I think that it looks pretty all right, at least. And you know, they definitely should have at least used it for the Wasp in the uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp set because the Iron Man helmet didn't really cut it. Uh, but yeah, it looks pretty good. And he does have a face underneath, and they actually include uh, an alternate hairpiece for him. The hairpiece doesn't look super Paul Rudd-like, but you know, neither does the face. It's the same face print that they used for Peter Parker in the uh, Far From Home sets. But you know, I mean. It's it's okay, I guess. I mean, uh, nice to just get a hairpiece, even if you're not going to use it for Ant-Man, because you're going to leave the helmet on him most of the time, probably, which does look really good. And you do get two Outriders. I'm going to show them to you one at a time. Uh, this one comes first, because he doesn't have the back attachment, so I get to show you their uh, torso print on the back, which is identical between the two figures. Like They have the same printed head, they have the same printed torso, they just have different accessories. This guy has this shoulder armor piece, which originated in the LEGO Movie 2, and he has these claw pieces in gold, which I believe may have been new in gold for the uh, end game sets, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I just know that they're less common than silver ones. And while that one did have the claws, which were a little bit new and different, this one is just the same old standard forearmed outrider that we got in most of the Infinity War sets too. So you know, this one is just kind of, just kind of here. Uh, I guess it's cool to add a little bit to your outrider army. You know, you're getting a whole War Machine Busters. So you might as well get a couple bad guys to beat it up with. But these are really just you know army building figures. I guess if you're building up an end game display, it'd be nice to have a bunch of these. But you know, it. it for people who are just buying this out for the good, like for the minifigures, uh, this isn't really that much of a draw. You're really gonna buy it for War Machine and Ant Man, if anything. And yeah, that really sums up my thoughts on this set. It's not not that great, you know. It's not terrible, you know. If you don't have a Hulkbuster and you want to play with some sort of cool mech thing, I uh, this is, you know, this could be the set for you. But if you are just buying this as a fan of Marvel stuff and you know, like getting Marvel characters as minifigures, then you know, you probably aren't really necessarily going to need this one. It's, you know, the War Machine Buster is okay, but it's mostly non-canon inspired, you know, it's got nothing, like, there's no 
the giant war machine buster in Avengers Endgame. Uh, sorry to spoil it for you if you haven't seen it already for some reason. Uh, you could sort of maybe argue that this is supposed to be the suit that he wears at the end of the movie, but even then that was basically, you know, barely larger than a regular suit. So, you know, I mean, it was a little bit bulkier, but it still probably would have been better done in minifigure form. Uh, and, you know, the while the two good guy minifigures here are cool for their new helmets, uh, they do just have quantum suits, so they aren't really even that impressive in that regard. I, I love the new Ant-Man helmet. I hope that they'll keep reusing that. Um, well, or, you know, slightly update it, unless they slightly update the suit. But, you know, I hope that they don't go back to the old Ant-Man helmet mold, because this is a really cool mold, and I am glad to have gotten that. But, you know, the rest of the set is probably worth passing on. Uh, like, if you just buy that helmet on Bricklink, and maybe the War Machine one, too, if you like that one. Because, you know, it, it is exclusive, it is different, it is new, and, you know, it's kind of cool. I just wish that we got the torso and legs to go along with it. But, uh, I don't know, what are you going to do? Um... The other thing that I don't like about this head is its price. Um, you know, it's not ridiculously overpriced as far as price per piece or, you know, even the amount of figures you get. It's just that the stuff you get here is not much... I mean, I would say it's probably even less than the Hulkbuster from Infinity War, uh, which is a much more recognizable vehicle. It had, you know, more exclusive characters with Proxima Midnight and uh, the new Falcon, and both of those figures were fully exclusive and, you know, not just having exclusive helmets. Uh, and I believe that set had... That set also did have Banner, which is a, you know, reused figure, but a little bit more important than an Outrider. And I think that set did have one Outrider, too, so I guess they're equal on that round. They have the same number of figures. Uh, that one had the little side cannon build. The only things here that you get that you didn't get in the other Hulkbuster were the additions of these two cannons, and I don't think that that's worth $5. So... You know, and the figures are of worse quality as well, so I would have wanted to see this cheaper than the Hulkbuster at, like, 25 But, you know, I mean, it's not ridiculously super overpriced. It doesn't feel quite like $35 worth of stuff, but, you know, $35 doesn't seem ridiculously out of line for, uh, you know, what other sets of the same, you know, approximate price uh, sometimes consist of. Like, it feels like a standard overpriced Star Wars set or something. But... Yeah, I mean, that's enough really about the set. It's nothing, nothing crazy special. Nothing like it's not offensively terrible. It's just, just kind of there, and that's probably the worst thing about it is that, you know, it could have been something cool, but it really, really wasn't all that much. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye everyone.